Our trip today takes us from the highlands of New South Wales to the southern waters of Australia. If you love the idea of chasing Murray Cod in the gorges or big South Australian whiting, then you'd better stay tuned. I recently dragged a kayak into the high country of New South Wales. Armed with my wading boots and a box of spinnerbaits, I found some truly memorable cod fishing. The feeder creeks and streams of our dams and our estuaries provide some top class freshwater fishing. Today I'm sitting on the western side of the Great Divide in New South Wales, and I'm sitting on the system that supplies water to Pindari Dam. It's very, very well known for its Murray cod population, which are one of our more iconic freshwater species. It's skinny water in parts, very hard to get to, which is why I'm sitting in a native watercraft 12.5 Mariner. The idea being, get the boat in anywhere you can and go exploring and try to find one of these great little fish to play with. Let's go see what we can turn up. It's just starting to get trapped by the serenity of this place. The birds having a chat and the quietness, and then I thought I saw a little shadow coming up behind that spinnerbait then. A great big paddle tail turned and nearly threw water at me. There you go. They're here. A little bit tentative at the moment, about a half an hour or so of casting. And I've gone to something which uh, is designed to make them wake up. One of the TT spinnerbaits. Loud and flashy. I reckon when the cod are a little bit subdued, they're territorial enough that you put something in their space that makes a lot of clutter and flash, there's a fair chance you're going to get a response. That's a good sign I'm doing something right. Always worth putting another cast right back into the same spot. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, yes. Back in the same spot. Uh. Oh, yeah, come on. And there we have it. Good little start to the day. Special fish. You can see why a lot of anglers spend a lot of time chasing them. Beautifully marked. A big paddle tail, those white tips, made for camouflage, and a head that's bullet shaped with a really big mouth. Tells you how they feed. They're quite happy to eat big things. Now that thing's hit a spinnerbait half his size, but that shows you how aggressive that it, that it can be. Now, I don't think he was the one that came up and chased me before, which means it's a good sign that little bank might be holding a few fish. So I'll get him back, see if I can go and extract another one. A lot of activity on the water, big boulders, undercut banks, shade, a little bit of running water, but a little bit of deep water thrown in there. Beautiful mix for high country cod. Yep, yep, yes, that's a better fish. Came out a couple of cracks of that. Whoa, really shallow little part of river there with weed sticking out the top of it. So in the back of my brain went, it's got to be a really good spot for shrimp to hang. And it's not, I could see how shallow it was, so I really buzzed the spinnerbait through it and I got a couple of big cracks. And then this magnificent looking fish. Isn't that spectacular? It is truly special experience to, to get up into this high country in New South Wales, get into shallow cod water. I fished a lot of the deep stuff down around central New South Wales, far western New South Wales to get in a little yak and explore, push yourself through rapids and encounter these brutally aggressive freshwater fish in shallow water. Very, very memorable fishing. There we go. There you go, and that's just doing the damage at the moment. You can see this water colors, it's not crystal clear. I've had a few rains. It's murkied it up a little bit. And it, quite often you'll have a system that's got that tannin colored water and it's a good option then to put a bit of flash and vibration into the water. You give, give the fish every chance they can to try and get out there and find it. One of our very, very cool freshwater sports fish. And you can see just by the shape of their body, so often a fish give you a really good clue as to how to fish for them just by their shape. You can see this guy, he hasn't got a pelagic tail, he's got a big paddle tail. He's got broad shoulders, narrow head and a big mouth. He's made for really short bursts of speed. With that color, you know he's gonna sit close to home. He's gonna sit and ambush himself 
I've watched these fish in tanks and they'll sit very, very still, just the slightest movement of fins and those eyes always working. The moment something tasty comes within range and annoys them, it all happens in a second. You often very can't see them eat, they're that quick. But that's the trick to catch them. Put it into where they are and try and bother them. These sorts of skinny water cod fisheries are strongly protected by the anglers that live here and spend most of their time fishing with good reason. They're unique and there's only so many fish that are gonna live in a system like this, which is why I very much believe in coming, having some fun catching a few fish and leaving them there for another day to grow big and do their thing. Here we go. Oh, see you later. All right, the fish is starting to get bigger. Day's warming up. I reckon another fish around the next bend. right up into the shade there. Sweet. The tree's pretty simple here. It's all about the cast. And the benefit of using bait cast gear, you can watch the lure in the air, and as it's getting close to landing right tight against the structure, you can use your thumb to slow it up and it just let it slide into where you want it to land. The idea being that if the fish is holding tight on structure and this bright, flashing object suddenly appears in its space, you're gonna hopefully tempt it just to, to lash out in almost frustration and instinct rather than have a good long look at it. And the key is, watching those casts, and putting them right tight in the spot that you think the fish are gonna be. Different days you're gonna find that'll be different structure. Sometimes it's riffles and rock country, other times it's undercut banks. Just work out on any day where they're gonna be and then get those casts in there. Don't be shy, a, fish, a lure like a spinnerbait's pretty snag resistant, encourages you to get it right in there. You're not gonna catch the fish out in the open water, it's gonna be up tight. So make sure you get it in there and then vary your speeds on any day till you work out the fish you're gonna want. Oh, oh look at the boiling there. That was a good fish, followed it all the way out. There's a big submerged tree under here. I missed one fish. I just had another one followed out from the tail end of the tree. There's a pretty good lesson there that sometimes if you've missed a fish, don't be fooled into thinking that's the only one there. Uh, these, these fish are competitive and they're going to look for the best spot. You might sometimes find that in a snag, the biggest fish has got the prime spot, but then there'll be a few smaller fish sitting in other places just waiting for that big guy to disappear, move on, so they can get prime spot. So just because you've missed a fish in one spot of the snag, don't be shy about hitting a, a few casts in other spots around it just to get those other competitors. Yep, yep, there we go. Oh yes. Oh. We're on tip stuff. Brilliant. Oh. <laughs> what happens when you're down level with the fish? He says you're in my park. Now I'm gonna throw a bit of water your way. Oh. Now they hit like a ton of bricks. They're made for power, these fish. And there's something electrifying about rolling a spinnerbait out of this kind of country having it getting belted at your feet. I think you just about turn the nose of the kayak around when you hit it, you hit it that hard. Oh, lovely fish. Certainly the catalyst to get in these bites at the moment, a bit of rattle and flash. Fishing a mixture of 3 8 ounce and half ounce spinnerbaits. I saw the boys before I came down here and they went, Nige, if you're going up that way, highly recommend the purple skirt. So I'm not one to look in the face of some good advice. Put on the purple skirt. The fish are liking it. Let's get this fish out of the water and you can have a closer look at it. There you have it. <laughs> Little predator of the Savern. Spinnerbait munching cod. And what a wonderful way to catch them. It's just gently paddling away up a river, throwing at all the likely looking spots and rolling it out. There you go, he's brutalised that spinnerbait. He's all arced up, still throwing some angry fins at me. He's ready to go back and join his mates, and that's exactly where he's going. Lovely. Well, every few hundred metres now, we're coming across fish. Which makes me keen to go and see what the next few hundred metres offers. Oh, yep. Wow. 
right on it. It's a reaction board if ever I've seen one. Oh yes, look at that. Pitch this little spinnerbait. Just throwing right on the edge of that bit of timber with a bit of shade onto the head of this pool. And I reckon I engaged that reel. This fish was all over it. Whew, it's exciting stuff. Here we go. Oh, there we have it. Just the ability then to be able to position myself and hold myself in some current, pedaling forward and backwards, and just making a key cast. Landed it right on the structure. And this guy was all over it. Classic reaction bite. It's a benefit of getting those casts in the right spot. Look at that. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh yes. Oh yes. Woo! Crunched it. Pitched it right on that bank side and he has come and buried that spinnerbait. Oh, they're a lot of fun. The sensitivity of these rods makes them all the more fun. And just the whole practice of pitching these spinnerbaits up tight, feeling everything that's going on much, much easier. Today I'm using one of the Wilson stable of rods. It's a live fiber territory in six kilos. Bait cast outfit, obviously, and it's ideal for this sort of stuff. Got a little Abu bait cast loaded up with 10 pound braid. I've got a 20, 20 and 30 pound liters on these rods, fluorocarbon, because we're obviously fishing around a lot of granite boulders, which throw out a lot of abrasion to your line. So you want a bit of abrasion resistance so the fluorocarbon does a good job. And there you go, simple outfit, simple approach. Get it right, it's a whole lot of fun. Look at that. Oh, they seem to know where their home rock is. Sometimes, and they're not. 10 to 20 pound fish, but they're pretty good at getting home with that short bit of distance, and that's the benefit of having a kite where you can propel yourself backwards. And it doesn't matter where you're fishing, whether you're chasing jacks in the snags, freshwater fish like this around their structure, the ability to be able to pedal backwards and tow a fish back into open water, it's gonna help you win a lot of those battles. It's a very attractive feature of this particular style of kayak. Look at that, scoff that. Small water Murray cod fishing is something that I think every angler should have a go at least once in their lifetime. To come up here, explore some new water, I've found it through looking at Google, common area, traveling stock route, easy access to the public. Small boat lets me get in off the beaten track and get up into the tight spots to come along and encounter one of our more prized freshwater fish. And on that note, Sky's starting to cloud up a bit. The forecast for showers, I don't particularly want to be going home on wet dirt roads. I think I'm going to let this guy go to go and get bigger. So I can come back and see you again another day. I'm going to get out of here. Here we go. King George Whiting are a great sport fish and awesome table fare. I caught up with my good mate Lenny to chase a few of South Australia's finest. Here we go Lenny, that's all we're after. Lovely little South Australian whiting. I've covered a couple of states to come and fish with my good mate Lenny. It's been a while between drinks mate, but you told me all about the really good whiting fishing you get in South Australia. And landed in Sejuna yesterday, and now I'm out in a roaring southerly, <laughs> chasing whiting off the beach. but. I think this one's a baby by the standards down here. They are though, a prize fish in these parts. They get a lot bigger than that. They're lovely to eat and they're really good little sports fish. Good on the baits, which is how we're chasing them today. Little mustard rigs. Bit for and, some, uh, some fresh squid that we caught, caught last night off the jetty, it's a Juno. And we might just work through a couple of baits that you can catch these guys on. Good way to start about getting a few of them in the box. All right. And we're off the mark. Good, well done. Welcome to South Australia.
compared to this one. Oh, very nice. That's a... There we go there, Nigel. Mate, that's... A, that's a Sejuna Whiting. That's a good one. Oh, far out. Who taught Whiting to take drag? <laughs> ah, I dropped it. That was oh, a big damn. one too. <laughs> I think it's a little bit bigger than this one, that one. <laughs> that's a nice fish, Lenny. Uh, if you like your whiting fishing. This is the home of whiting. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful fish. And nice little mustard long shanks, number two. Yeah. You can either rig it up yourself or using a pretty simple rig, a little Paternoster rig. Um, I've got the, the pre-rigged set. You can buy a little two hook sets in the number twos and it's an ideal whiting bait. You can then just adapt your sinker to fish in the type of depth that you're fishing. Whack on some squid or a bit of pippy or cockle or any other strip, fish, flesh, bait, and away you go. Put it in the right spot. I'm gonna catch one, because I just lost a good one then. Right, get into them. Just quickly step through how we're rigging one of the baits we're using at the moment, and that is squid strip. So we've caught a nice fresh squid last night, cut them up into nice fine strips, which are gonna match the size hook we're using on this rig. And then what I wanna do is try and just thread them on that hook so I get a nice flat lying bait that flutters around a bit with the current in the water. I'm gonna pin that hook through the top part of my strip, push the hook right through, and then thread it through a lower section. I can then thread that up the hook a little bit, start on my next strip, same process, follow the hook through, thread it through so that I've got penetration from my hook point. I've also got a few nice tentacly little bits of squid hanging around, make it look a little bit more attractive in the water. That'll flutter around and hopefully get the attention of a nice whiting down there. Obviously using squid strips at the moment, but another very popular bait when you're fishing for your whiting is your pippies. I think you know, some states call them cockles. Lenny? Cockles here in South Australia, pippies over East Victoria, New yep. South Wales. But one of my favourite baits again, perfect bait for King George whiting. Pretty simple thing, just discard the shell, a bit of early. Sort of just basically thread it on, up the shank of the hook. Nice and juicy, plenty of scent. King George Whiting, love them. And also got a couple of um, fluoro... Beating it up, mate. Beating it up, yeah. The jewellery. Bit of attraction there. Yeah. I think you got a bit of thing for jewellery, I know that. So yeah. it's, that's all good with you. Now, soft bait, but there's sometimes there's, there's a slightly harder little section around the edge. There is, yeah. yeah that's where I started. The, 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 the white section of the pippy. Yep. And then finished off into the... the I guess the gut section of the, the yep. pipi. Yeah. So you've got something firm for that hook to hold on to. So, and yeah, yeah, it's gonna like, you know, it's, it's a nice soft bait, a lot of scent, it's gonna float around. Yep. Let's go put it to work, eh? Right at. Give that a shot. A little spot where just out from the sandy beach is it just drops off into some slightly deeper water. There's also, you know, it's, there's a fair bit of weed hanging around too, Lenny, and so it's a prime place for fish to cruise. They've got a bit of shelter and they're gonna pick up a feed as they go as well. So where you find your whiting, you're gonna find... Yeah, you're right on the yeah. edge of this weed patch here. With the little sand holes here, and that's where these whiting are hanging about. Just right on the edge of the weed, the edge of the sand here. So use your eyes to find them, Lenny. Use your eyes to find them. I like keeping my bait fishing simple. And in line with that, there's a really nice little simple Paternoster rig. I've got a nice long dropper on the bottom. Let the fish have a bit of a play if they're a bit tentative. And I've got a number two hook sitting on top of a, a top dropper, which is nice and tight. Now to add a bit of color to that, because I know whiting like feeding on things like worms, benefit with some of these mustard whiting rigs is you've got that red tubing and some of those beads, which do add a bit of color to something while it's floating around, just makes that bait look a little bit more attractive. And hopefully that fluttering around in the right spot anchored with a suitably sized sinker, it's gonna do the damage. Bait fishing is a big practice of sensitivity and if you're new to bait fishing, there's a few really key little tips which might help you get on the water and start catching a few fish. And What'll happen when you first throw a bait in front of a fish is that they'll often investigate it. It's very rare that a fish comes up and just eats something that doesn't look quite right. It smells right to them, but you've got to remember it's attached to a hook and a line, so it might not behave quite as naturally as a normal bit of food would. So a fish is going to come up and investigate it, and that usually results in a few taps and bumps that you'll feel through your rod. 
that's the time that you don't want to strike. You want that fish to get a little bit comfortable, take that bait into its mouth before you set the hook. And so what you really want to wait for is a bit of weight to load up in that rod. So let them have those first few bumps and then wait for that slow draw of the rod towards wherever you put it. And then you want to set your hook. It's a game of patience. One thing that'll help you feel a lot of those bites is A, having a really nice sensitive rod. I've got a nice graphite carbon blankie, so it transfers a lot of the, the sensitivity which is coming through the line. And the other thing I, I do is put my forefinger on that line and it really helps me feel everything that's going on at the other end. You got there, Nigel? I'm thinking, hoping, we might have a King George here, Lenny. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Lovely. That's what we're after, Lenny. He's a nice one. A good fish. Uh, coming from Queensland where our sand whining for us, 35 to 40 centimetre fish is a, is a nice fish to come up. And they tell me that these ones are small to average. That's pretty impressive. Now they really use that body, long thin body, but they got really quick turns of speed, which is a bit of a trait of whiting wherever you go to catch them. Well presented bait put in the right spot with these guys. It's going to tempt them. You've got to find, obviously find where, they, where they're feeding. And the shape of their body pretty well gives it away. I like hiding in little broken ground spots, close to the edge of a bit of weed and sand, sand and reef, shuffling around the bottom. Opportunistic, they'll grab whatever's about. It's just a case of putting a bait into the spots where you know they're going to be cruising around and having a feed. Put yourself in the chance to catch a whiting. That is a nice whiting. Nice. And very nice table fare, and that's exactly where this one's going. To chase these whiting today, I'm using a nice light spin outfit. It's one of the Wilson's blade and tail spin rods. It's a seven foot light outfit. By that, it means it's got a really nice sensitive tip section, which is pretty important when you're bait fishing. Because when you do have fish playing around with a bait, you really don't want them to know that you're attached to the other end. So having a bit of soft sensitivity there is a big benefit. On top of that, they've got nice, strong butt sections, which then help when you want to hook a fish. And playing them is an absolute joy on such a nice light outfit. I've matched that up with the Fluga Patriarch reel. I've got eight pound braid, and I've got a nice long six pound fluorocarbon leader, which I've then attached to my rig. Very simple outfit, Lenny, yeah. but it makes it pleasurable. Enjoy your bait fishing. Oh yeah, that was all right. Oh, I'll tell you what, I give it to you this morning. <laughs> oh yes, starting to play the game, Lenny. That nice yeah, one. The tide changes brought them on. There you go, mate. A nice little King George whiting. He's good. Maybe 42, 43 centimetre. Yeah, nice fish. South Australian fish. Well, it's been a fair trip coming down from north. But we haven't been out here very long, mate. We've been out here for about an hour and a half. <laughs> nice, simple little rig. Fresh squid bait. Finding a couple of little patches. Little tinny brings me back to the old days of when I was growing up bait fishing. And there you go. Some lovely tasty King George Whiting for dinner tonight. It's pretty easy, but it's fun. Mm -hmm.